VP Kamala Harris shoots at shoots back at Donald Trump. And it is quite amazing, sizable lead going into this general election, especially given the fact she just started the campaign. With millions watching and many people benefiting from this program called Indisputable, we just need 1% of the viewers to become a paid member so we can continue to bring this content to you. Now back to the show. Here's the Donald Trump call out. Let's talk about what we're dealing with on the other side. So on that last topic, if Donald Trump gets the chance, he will end the Affordable Care Act. And take us back to a time when insurance companies had the power to deny people with pre-existing conditions. You remember what that was like? Children with asthma, breast cancer survivors, grandparents with diabetes. Well, Governor Walt and I will not let that happen. Because we believe health care should be a right and not just a privilege for those who can afford it. As governor, Tim has continued to fight for working families. He secured paid leave for workers in Minnesota. And he refused, he refused as governor to allow any student in their public schools to go hungry. for every child. And Tim Walt and I, we agree about many things, including when our middle class is strong, America is strong. All right, and a winning message indeed. So let's talk about the reality of this campaign. This campaign resonates with Common sense, feeding children seems to be a good idea. But because conservatives have actually debated against that point, calling it a handout, another social program. Oh, The state should not be responsible for your children. Well, they have taken a different point of view. So when a candidate for president says, hey, this my vice presidential running mate, I mean, he made sure children got food and everybody goes wild. That's a policy point. When you talk about paid leave, policy point. You go to a Trump rally, they applaud when he talks about, I don't know, Sleepy Joe. Or when he says, crooked somebody. Or fake news, right? No policy. Look at the polling data. Vice President Kamala Harris leads former President Donald Trump by as much as eight points. That is well outside of the margin of error. Once again, points are not predictions. These are polls are not predictions. They are snapshots, all right? Gives you a good idea what people are at now, which also shows a massive 21 point lead swing in net favorability. Another strong indicator. After President Joe Biden's debate performance touched off calls for him to drop out, the president announced he would no longer be seeking a second term. And minutes later, threw his support behind his VP. Um, now, I will say this I remember when uh, a rumor mill happened after that debate that said, you know, Democrats at the White House or some of the surrogates with the campaign coordinated with the White House, they basically set Biden up. They knew he would not perform well, hoped it would do exactly what it did. I thought that was probably not true, obviously. Um, I have a different take today. It seems like they probably did just that. Okay, side note, in just two weeks, you have to remember, Harris, who quickly became the presumptive nominee, 
has completely shifted the dynamics of the race with a fundraising juggernaut, an aggressive campaigning schedule and consistent polling gains, consistent polling gains. But still, it's a close race. Um, A new Marquette Law School national poll shows a dramatic shift in the VP's favor as she leads Trump by six points among likely voters and a whopping eight points in the contest that includes independent candidates. In the new poll, National Survey finds Vice President Kamala Harris is the choice for president of 52% of registered voters. And former President Donald Trump is at 48% currently. Among likely voters, Harris receives 53% and Trump 47%. These results include voters who initially did not choose Harris or Trump, but who were then as whom they would vote for if they had to choose. Now, something interesting about these numbers, all right? So when you see something that says 52%, 53%, Trump 47%, understand the company gets you about 45%. I'm talking about the Democratic Party or the Republican Party. Those companies, yeah, they are companies, they get you about 45%. So you have to get the rest. This is how the race is won, all right? So uh, May 6th uh, through the 15th. The law school poll national survey, Trump was the choice of 50% and Biden was the pick of 50% among registered voters. While Trump took 51% of likely voters, Biden dipped at 49%. When the ballot question explicitly includes independent candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr., Libertarian Party candidate Chase Oliver, Green Party candidate Jill Stein, and independent candidate Cornel West. Harris then receives 47%, Trump 41% among registered voters. Kennedy is supported by 9%. Oliver receives 1%. Stein is at 2%. West wins 1% among these voters. Among likely voters, Harris is supported by 50% and Trump 40%, Kennedy 6%, Oliver 1, Stein 1, West 0%. Now, these numbers will not pan out across all states because everybody did not or could not obtain ballot access. I think Chase had some issues as well, maybe in a couple of states or districts. Now, you have the poll that also showed a gain. Here's the gain. You got 21 points, a 21 point gain. In net favorability. Uh, Since the last survey taken in May, the VP is viewed favorably by 47% and unfavorably by 50% of net approval of negative 3% up from negative 24% in May. Trump's net favorability also swung since May before the assassination attempt going from negative 17 to negative 8. Okay. This is uh, quite fascinating. It's quite fascinating because typically you see the up and down. You see the roller coaster effect, right? A candidate says something, people don't like it. All of a sudden, polling goes down. But here's what has happened. And it's not as if they've been flawless in the campaign. They've been good. They've been damn good, but not flawless. I mean, there are vulnerabilities. There are opportunities, but the insults don't stick. It's old and tired. So when the right insults them, cause Kamala Harris a DEI higher, that's old and tired. We already know you're racist. Do you have something else? We knew you were gonna come out with that. That doesn't move anyone. It only makes MAGA cheer at a rally. And then they wanna come at Governor Walz and say, well, 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 he's he's ultra liberal, he's he's a progressive. Yeah, you know, and I, I kind of agree with progressive values is what the average person is saying. I like children being able to read, eat food, things like that. It's ironic that's a progressive ideology. And the vast majority of Americans agree with progressive values item by item, line by line. And that is the message they are delivering. For the first time, I'm seeing an articulation of a message outside of the scope of a category. When you create a category, they brand it. 
And then they vilify the brand. Remember Obamacare? But when you go item by item, line by line of what the policy actually is, they can't attack all that. Stay away from the brands, stay away from the category. You don't have to do it because of the time frame. You have a quick window here. The turnaround is swift. All right, Jordan, thoughts? I think the polling shift is is really interesting. And you see there was an Ipsos poll that checked in with people they had polled previously when Biden was the candidate. And you're seeing at that point, Trump was leading Biden by a few points. Now those same people are leaning Harris by a few points. So of course, Kamala Harris offers different things than Biden while still being handcuffed to a lot of the same policy. So there's a challenge there that you you talk about and you reference. But for so many people, it was just a different option than an old white guy. Yep. Trump is having a press, press conference right now at Mar-a-Lago. And you see, because Biden isn't in the race, there's an intense scrutiny on Trump's mental, mental capabilities, yeah, on right. his mental clarity, his ability to answer questions, his ability to recall facts. He is unable to do that, and he has benefited from Biden, especially being unable to do that. The the point that people missed in Biden's dismal debate performance was that Trump had a horrendous debate, could not answer questions, and just kept bringing up immigration. So to an extent, it's message discipline, but he wasn't astute and he wasn't sharp. That was obfuscated by Biden's exceptionally bad performance. Now you see why he is so scared of Harris, why he isn't on the campaign trail. He hasn't had a rally. He's doing this press conference to say he wants to debate now because of the pressure. But up until this point, he has been running scared. Yeah, and we see what happens when he talks to black women. It should be interesting.